Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about Django flow control. Now the flow of the application is, of our web application is controlled by the Django server process. When we run the Django server, um, it is initially it's not going to do anything until a request has come in. The Django server process acts in the same way as the Flask server process which are only triggered if an HTTP request is received by the server. So when we search for the page, the browser will send an HTTP GET request to the server asking for some, some data. If we go to the, uh, if we go to any of the pages, uh, or um, we are, if we have a mapping for that page, that page is going to show. But however, if we don't have a mapping for that page, it is not going to show. The reason that we have this page not found is because we have not actually specified any mapping for this main URL. We have specified that for the welcome page, welcome.html, that's why you can see it. All right, uh, so let's just say that when we go to the welcome.html, a request is made to the server and the server will display um, in the server log, which we can see in the browser in here, right here. And you can see it says not found because we don't have that uh, for the main URL, we don't have any mapping. Uh, the server will display all the HTTP get all the HTTP requests that came for any kind of mapping. So uh, when we made any uh, an HTTP get request for the welcome.html, it is going to show it within the server log. Then the Django is going to look up the view function map to this specific URL. What is the view function map to this welcome.html? It is the welcome. And then it is going to execute that. And, and you can see that it is going to return uh, after executing, after executing, it is going to return this string to the screen. So basically, every time we refresh the page, a new request is made and is displayed in the server log, then the view function mapped to that specific URL is executed every single time. Now, I would like to show you um, how this actually works by adding another view function. So within this, I'm going to say def uh, date. Uh, I'm going to call it date because I want to show you that whenever you refresh the page, this function is called and called and executed over and over. Therefore, the date is going to change. Therefore, the time is going to change. So. Let's pass in the request and the, the only thing that this date is going to do is it is going to return an HTTP response. So I'm going to say HTTP response format is strength. Uh, this page was uh, served at, uh, let's go ahead and let's import our date time module. So I'm going to say from day time import the date time object there we go so in here i'm going to say this uh, has been uh, this web page has been served or this page was served at uh, let's grab our stir function and let's convert it to a string i'm going to say date time dot now let's just save that now it is not going to work because we don't have any kind of mapping for this yet so what we should do is we should go into our urls.py first we need to import that view function so what is the name the name is going to be date so i just imported that there and i need to add another path for it so what is going to be uh, the path for this function i'm just going to say it's going to be date this is the url so whatever you write in here it is going to be the url uh, I'm going to say the URL is going to be date. And what is the view function that this URL has to be mapped to? It is the date view function. There we go. Let's just save that. And now we should be able to go to that URL. Now, this is our main URL, right? Any other URL that you add, we know that there is an implicit slash. So you need to add that slash. And from there, we are going to do date. 
So if I do date, it says this page was served at this time in this, at this, at this date in this time. So I'm going to zoom really in so you can really see what is happening here. So if I refresh, you can see the second is 22, 25, 26, 26.9. We could wait like a few seconds, 30. And so each time this page is refreshed, a, an HTTP GET request goes to the server log in here. Django takes a look at the server log and finds what is the URL. This is the URL. Then it jumps into URLs.py and it finds that URL. And when it found it, it found it, it is going to map it to the view function that is associated with that URL. And when it finds that view function, it's going to jump into the views.py file and it is going to execute that specific view function that is relating this specific URL. This is actually how this entire process is going to work. So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if we go to our uh, main page, so if I come in here, if you add the slash or not, it's always going to be there. We can see that it says page not found, so let me just zoom out. But I want this 127.0.0 uh, colon 8000 to be my main web page. So how can we do that? So to be able to do that is just we need to go ahead and provide a URL mapping for it. How can we provide a URL mapping for that? And I want this welcome view function to handle our main web page, our main page or our home page. Again, I want the welcome view function to handle the main page, this view function to handle this main page. So what is the main page, AKA the root page? It is simply a slash, right? But in Django, you just have to provide uh, empty quotes. So when you say empty quotes, it is going to imply that there is a forward slash. And this URL, empty quotes, uh, this is going to represent or denote the root URL. What it is going to be mapped to, it is going to map be mapped to this welcome. And this welcome uh, view function, what it is going to do, it's just going to show a string. It's going to do a lot more, but for now, it's just going to show a string to the user. So let's save that. We can see our changes are being detected in the server. So you don't have to close the server at any time. Um, you might like have to do it a couple of times, and that is just for teaching purposes and to follow along with me. But other than that, you don't really have to close that server. Just keep it running. And now if I refresh the page, there we go. So again, just to wrap everything up, uh, I'm going to go over this concept one more time. Uh, we are Whenever uh, we have the server running, whether it is for Flask or for Django, server is not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. It's going to wait uh, for incoming HTTP requests. We know we have four types of HTTP requests. The major and the common is get, and that is just requesting some info from the server. When the user visits this page, it's going to make uh, the browser, the user doesn't know about this, right? It's all under the hood. The browser is going to make an HTTP GET request to the server. That GET request can be seen in the server log. And in the server log, we're going to see the type of the request to which URL it was made. You can see it was made to the root URL. That's why it is just a forward slash. And then Django will take a look at the server log. It's going to see that it has to respond to a GET request made to this URL. Then Django is going to jump from the terminal. It's going to jump into URLs.py and find this URL. Keep in mind, Django will have to first find the URL. And it finds it right here. Then it is going to trace that URL to the uh, mapping to the, uh, it's going to map it to the view function. The view function is welcome. It's going to then execute that welcome. So this is how this entire process works. If for any URL, there is no mapping, it means any, any kind of URL that does not have any uh, view function, it is going to throw an error. 
And at the end, what we did was by specifying empty quotes in here, we said that the welcome view function has to be mapped to this root page of our web application. And the root page is 127.0.1 at port 8000. And you can see it says welcome to the meeting planner application. That's it for this uh, lecture. See you in the next one.